Black boy. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? You've tuned in live to the Fly Sports and Entertainment Podcast in all the land. This is Stat Lines Matter. I am your host, Mark E. Stewart. And as always, I'm here with my partner in crime, Rob Hunter Jr. Yeah! Over enthusiastic, he's got his coffee. That's that's a lot of caffeine. This is cup number three. Yeah, it is cup number three. I got the light roast from the Panera. Shouts out to Panera. If y'all want to give us a quick little sponsor right back, you know, it's reciprocity. Um. Anyway, yes. So this is, yeah, light roast. And I heard, from what I understand, the light roast is supposed to be a little stronger. Yeah, maybe so. Like sometimes that's how it goes. Hey, real quick, um, I want to get into something that we usually do at the end. I want to get you guys who have done an amazing job fan base is growing like crazy make sure you like subscribe and get the notifications for our show on youtube uh our audio podcast comes on apple apple Podcasts as well as spotify uh you can always reach us there and uh across our socials uh we're at stat lines matter on twitter tiktok facebook you know any place they got social media we got it we're there and and we have a presence so make sure you check in you guys have been amazing supporting us and we appreciate you guys checking in each and every week uh and continue to do so and tell your friends your friends gonna like this yeah tell your friends tell your friends y'all got tell some you, friends that's how mama. i met my wife i said dude she got some friends are you, you know, serious that's my homeboy his girl i said hey man she got some friends really and he was like uh he asked his girl and she was like yeah who she had a boyfriend at the time you just scooped up in there 10 years later Oh, you yeah. a little slow to on the well, slow, to, I, slow to work. Nah, I will wait. I will wait. I will be out putting in overtime, but it took a decade. Dang, you okay? I've been knowing her since I was fifteen. That's that's and actually pretty dope. That's 25. persistence. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. persistence. Hey, when 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 you focused on it, yeah, you know what you want. Yeah, you know. And, and, and then y'all been together ever since. Met over the phone. Really? Yeah. This is back. Okay, so it wasn't phones like it is now. It wasn't no smartphone. It was just dial tone. Yeah. Back then, it yeah. was none of that. So it was just. Uh, I like her voice. <laughs> wow. That's dope, man. That's actually a good story. Um, I, you actually told me about this, and I kind of looked it up real quick. Um, John Stockton got banned yeah. from Gonzaga. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Gonzaga is uh, – John Stockton is probably Gonzaga's most notable uh, alumni, correct? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, for now. Till Jalen, uh, is it Jalen Suggs? Uh, till Jalen Suggs, uh, you know, Jalen Suggs has a lot to do <laughs> <laughs> before he becomes hey, their hey, most. Hey, that, that, the NCAA tournament helped him out a lot, though. Yeah, but the reason they're even in the NCAA tournament is because of guys like Stockton. No, but that, Stockton been gone. But Stockton that's, put that program on the map. Part, they, they and Adam Morrison off the map. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Once, once Stockton got on, they were they were legit. Nah, yeah, then that's why that's how they left, got Adam Morrison. They went back to anonymity. John nah, Stockton left there in like 83. It was uh, 80, yeah, I guess about right, 83, 84. Like, I, I was like, I mean, does that, who, what? And then yeah. Adam Morrison, yes, a little bit. And yeah. then, you know, I thought, hey, look, I thought Adam Morrison. Me too. He fooled nice. me. Adam Morrison fooled me. I thought he was going. I thought, I was like, hey, they didn't got them one. I did. And I, and I was telling people. Yeah. No, I, I, I went, was, yes. I went I, on record. I did go all in on it. <laughs> We got drafted by Charlotte. Was it Charlotte? It didn't even matter. Every every uniform he put on, he was trash. I don't, you don't think he put on too many. He was. He played for the Lakers. He played for your Lakers. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't remember that era. Hey, hey everyone with LeBron, it wasn't my. Oh, Lakers. okay. Oh, oh, so you you you. So it's kind of like your relationship to Jordan. You're Jordan there. We used to always say that. You never liked the Bulls. You don't like the Bulls. Hey, hey, you ain't finna get rid of Dennis, Jordan, Pippen, and the coach all in the same year, and ain't gonna have no backlash from me. I was like, that, that, that's an organization. I can't ride with that type of stupidity. First of all, with Jerry Krause was talking about, oh, Phil's not going to be back. Phil's not going to be back. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I mean. Why look, not? Hey, Jerry can't Middle answer Middle finger for to you. Oh, sorry. Middle finger nah, I mean, you. you can put your finger up. I can put my finger Oh, uh, we on cable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so what what do, do you know about? Do what people do you? still have cable? <laughs> yeah, like Comcast. That's cable, that's right? cable, okay. Yeah. Shout out to Cable. Yeah. Hey, Comcast, if y'all want to, you know what I mean? We, we with it. You, so you just coming whoring for sponsors today, huh? Hey, look at him, man. Hey, hey. <laughs> we, hey you just hey, lights that don't come on for free. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, you ain't never lied about that. But, okay, um, so, yeah. So, so tell me about so, Stockton. So, so, yeah, John Stockton, you know, uh, has been coming to the games for a long time. Uh, Like you said, their most notable alumni. Yeah. Yes. Um, Probably till Chet Lee. Chet, Chet probably. You know what I mean? Let's, okay. Let's, let's calm down. Let's 
put away the anointing oil. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, let's just calm down. But uh, check, check but, him ball though. But if y'all don't know, uh, John Stockton is uh, one of the, I guess you would call him an anti-vaxxer, yeah. anti, uh, the vax is more harmful than... And, AKA uh, crazy man. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Um, I, I didn't know he was... Anyway, so he's been refusing to wear a mask. He does not want to wear a mask. And uh, so they've uh, banned him from. Uh, oh, they suspended, they suspended his season tickets. tickets. Yeah, yeah. Because his back. son does his son play on the team? I don't even know. I think his kid plays on the team. Really? Yeah. So you can't, you know, and I, you know. So I thought it was it's interesting, and not to drag it this way, but it's like, you know, they love following the rules until it's a rule they don't like. Of course. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, uh, comply. Yeah. You know, it was like. Uh, you know, we, you win the elect fan fair and square, and you get rid of the drop boxes. <laughs> we yeah, we don't want that. Now. Yeah, nah, <laughs> come on. There's a lot of we ain't gonna talk. We could do a whole show deva- devoted to uh, the moving of the goalposts. Yeah, and so I just, you know, I mean, you know, it's like it's the rules until it's a rule you don't like, exactly. and then all of a sudden now you want to rewrite, you know, the, the the guidelines. Well, one of the things that I thought was notable on the Stockton thing is that he's uh, gone in public interviews uh, saying. Things that like 150 in 150 athletes in their prime have died from taking the vaccine, which we all know is completely unsubstantiated uh, and has been debunked. It was a conspiracy theory that had been debunked. But once I heard that he was the guy who he was a guy that was in interviews and using his platform to spread that, I was like, oh, okay, you're yeah. you're that guy. Twenty thousand. He said twenty thousand. Uh, he said, and he said, it's probably more people have died from specifically the vaccine, but they're not telling you. Yeah. Um, he was in a documentary called COVID and the vaccine truth and lies and misconceptions. Yeah. I, um, yeah. And so he's like one of the big, one of those guys that's just like all up and through, you know, I mean, the, the, the crevices of YouTube. Yeah. I listen, not to make the show about, uh, COVID or, or politics. I just think, it, I think some of the, uh, the the data that's there regarding the the vaccination. Where are you getting your data it's, from? It's it's just uh, it's it's. How do you refute it? Like, well, sometimes you have to in order to believe some of the the conspiracy theories, you got to go all the way around the mountain, come back across, go back across in order to land on just one thing. If if you keep it simple, though, right? Let's just keep it really simple. Let's say you don't believe in the vaccine. Let's say you believe COVID is the new hoax. Let's say you believe in all those things. It's a mask. You could still believe that all of those yeah. things are not true and go. Or maybe yet your risk isn't as great as what they say it is. And you can go, okay, well, you know what? I got to wear a mask to go shop in this place. I got yeah. to go wear a mask to go, you know, watch my son play ball. Or don't go. Yeah, or either or. And but I, but you can still have those beliefs. Yeah. And, and shouldn't be challenged on them. Yeah. Essentially, you like you shouldn't because you're wearing the mask. You shouldn't be less of a conspiracy theorist. Like I, I don't know. Like, yeah. like from your, you, are you yeah. afraid that your conspiracy theorist friends we might gonna, see and go, oh, look like, what he's doing. Yeah, he's got a mask on. Yeah. Like, you're like, no, nah, I'm still, I'm, I'm about to go up, but I got to go up in the public real quick. Yeah, <laughs> en- enough of, enough of crazy John. Um, <laughs> it seems like every week, even though, I guess we're a sports and entertainment show, so he gets in under the, uh, the entertainment discussion, but. The Kanye watch. The, 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 the weekly Kanye watch. That's how you know Kanye's popping because he finds a way to make it into our show every week. Uh, but this week wasn't so much about him; it was about, I guess, his uh, Michael Jordan's son, Marcus, uh, said something to the effect that Kanye and Brand Jordan should get together to collab. Yes. Uh, so Kanye posted the Jumpman to his Instagram. And I believe Marcus Jordan, Jordan's son, commented up underneath that and said, this is something that we need to make this conversation happen. New year, new whips, new watches. new, And, uh, you know, that's 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 that was the comment. Um, you can go back and Google it. New whips, new year, new new uh, watches. And so we need to this is like part of that. I guess we need to make a new alliance or have a new uh new partnership with with Yeezy uh I was I was thinking so I wonder if when he was saying that did Mike pick up the phone and call his estate planner and were like uh, we need to take some of Marcus inheritance and uh I, switch it around to the other folk look, look. <laughs> I mean, you, you, because Mike hadn't said anything no. like to the to the I, all, the only reason we believe that there is a rub between Kanye and Michael is because Kanye went on drink champs 
and said that Michael won't take a meeting with him because of the song Facts, where he said Yeezy just jumped over Jordan um, in sales. Uh, and, and so, but but Mike still has been mum on the whole thing. Well, I also think that it's a it's a little bit of a stretch to think that Michael won't take the meeting because of a line in a rap song. Maybe it's the constant nonsense on the internet that we see. Maybe it's maybe Mike is like, I don't need that type of energy and drama in my life. Maybe Mike's not taking the the call from like keep keep that guy over there. Hey. Like I, if I'll say this, if I was Mike with Mike's money, I would not take that meeting. Hey, look at here. He doesn't need Kanye. If that shoe ever come out, that's going to, that, I need that. That's going to have the attention of the entire black race and some of the white race, kind of like Obama's inauguration. <laughs> like it's going to be, it's going to be an event. I think, I think. I think Mike should. I mean, that would be the equivalent of Mike getting his seventh ring. That shoe, that collaboration, that would be something that the Yeezy and Jordan coming together to do a shoe, and and then Kanye come out with a song about it, <laughs> and and then they go on tour. Mike and Mike and Kanye go on tour. You disrespectful, bro. I'm just saying. You You're have, disrespectful. You right have now. Mike in the back on stage in his full bully uniform. You know what I'm saying? Dunking on the nine foot goal, but don't nobody tell him that it's that it's nine feet. Everybody still think it's ten feet. So he's doing all his vintage dunks in the new shoe. You know maybe maybe we should get Dominique Wilkins to do that. And they tour so, so that you can really be vested. Let's get Dominique drop. to do that. They do a drop every every city they go in. That's when they drop the shoe. That'll be lit. <laughs> That'll be super lit. <laughs> like this is I can't even I can't even sign up. Bro, That's, bro, you're disrespectful bro, right now. Kanye do a you're disrespecting record, the you're disrespecting the Mike conference. You disrespecting. That's not disrespectful. You are, you just said you said he gonna be hanging backstage. Why? Mike? No, no, no. He on stage. Yeezy's performing. Mike is on stage in his full Bulls uniform. You're playing my man, Duncan, on the nine. He's I don't want to see. I don't want to see Mike. <laughs> That's the, that's the show. That's the show. That you, hey, everybody showed up. That's gonna sell out everywhere. Like Not Mike that. on stage. If you was a creative the director, you would get you would get trashed with the nine foot goal. You would get trashed for that. That's awful. But everybody think it's ten foot. He taking off from the free throw line. I mean, look, it's entertainment, baby. You know what I mean, like, and everybody, Mike still y'all, got it. Y'all Mike. hear this disrespect? I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even going to get this. Mike I'm still not got this it. Mike still got I'm it. Mike still took nothing. off from the free throw line at 72 years old. <laughs> Just more disrespect. You know, saying, you know that man not 72. I, I'm saying. You I, know that man I'm, not 72. All I'm saying old. is it will be lit. That's it. And that and that shoe came out. My kids ain't going to school that day. We're gonna be just. We're gonna just be hanging around the TV. I hope <laughs> that. I wish the best for the Yeezy and, and him Jordan continue brand. to do that. And I wish the best for the Jordan brand as always. And Marcus. And, I, I, and, and Marcus and, and all of the kids. But I say, let everybody just do your own thing. You don't, you don't want to see the, 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 no. the, the, the black folks working together? Uh, they black folks work together. With Kanye and Jordan black not, folks? Not, just let Mike stay over here. Let Kanye stay over there. But um, they, you got to admit, the boy know how to make some shoes. Mike does too. So that why that why it makes sense. We don't need no collab. Let's let's it's, it, like, it's like it's like it's like Paul no McCartney and Stevie Wonder. Every and ever. Yeah, they both not, great but songwriters. Not, but that song wasn't that's a great example. That wasn't near any one of their best work. Ebony and Ivory was a great song. <sighs> you're you're pushing. Live together and per- we Ebony and Ivory. Side by side on my piano. That, I always thought that was the piano. That, you know, you got to be an extra exquisite dude to say piano. I say this. Who says piano? The fact that they wrote. The P-W. only reason we piano. accept that song on any level is we, because of who did it. If somebody came and played me a song called Ebony and Ivory, we live together in perfect harmony. Man, out of here. You don't, you don't you don't like that record? I like it cuz I cuz we were like at that time, yes. Hey. But it did not stand up. Hey, yes no on the on the Ebony and Ivory record. Y'all are y'all familiar with that song? No, because it wasn't good. It's not like, you know, Ribbon in the Sky, my boy. Like, come on. What are we talking about? Y'all know Ribbon in the Sky? Yeah. Exactly. Can we move on, please? I <laughs> 
Hey, uh, and we're going to move on, but I don't accept this as an outcome. <laughs> I don't accept any you, of this wait, so you, for many of so you So do you feel like in, in, in the Paul McCartney catalog and the Stevie Wonder catalog that Ebony and Ivory is anywhere in the top 10 of either one of their work? You talking about guys that got like 20 real hits, particularly Stevie Wonder's got like More maybe than 30, More maybe than 30, that. 40. More than that. Like, You're talking about two of the greatest to ever walk the earth. Correct. Ebony and Ivory. In terms of songwriting accomplishments. Ebony and Ivory is up there. I'm up there. Well, I mean, you know, is it is it above band on the run? No, nah, probably not. No, but, but I mean, it's up there. Up there with what though? Up there with the, with with some of their best records. But like, let it be. Did he write that, or did uh, uh the first the young Lennon wrote that? John Lennon wrote that by himself. No, Paul, Paul wrote that. Paul wrote let, let it be. No, it ain't up there with Let It Be. Okay, now. that's no, what I'm saying. It's Ebony and Ivory. But I'm being true. It's actually whack. No, you, you, cause you did it's this on the last talk, show. You said though. Under the Cherry Moon because was whack. It's not whack. Ebony and Ivory is not whack either. I, 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 I fundamentally reject. Here's, here's, here's the place that I am, I and maybe when you get older, you'll get here. I'm at a place where I can accept the greatness of people and their accomplishments, but I'm not going. When you're young and you're buying in and you think because Prince dropped the album is automatically going to be banging. When you, when the years go by, you can listen with a more critical ear and go, Love Sexy wasn't as good as Sign of the Times. We can say that. But when Love Sexy came out, I thought it was genius, especially because you couldn't, you couldn't ID skip pass. You, you couldn't, couldn't skip, skip it. Like, I was like, ah, Prince killed him. It's three good songs on Love Sexy. That was dumb. Prince, wherever you at, that was dumb. That's all I'm saying. Like, we can look back and can be you honest get a about CD that. Can you 9 have his ID, the songs now? Did they it fix just, that? It was goofy. They, was and, goofy. and he was naked on the front cover of the album. Prince. You just seen the love yeah. song? Hey, bruh, hey, bruh, is naked. Bucky oh, he, naked. He ain't got a stitch. A no. Asshole naked. Yeah. And it's, it's, and it's a tenderness to it, too. It's not like, his it's, not like it's not like D'Angelo, how does it feel naked? It's 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 a tenderness like a, like a lotion commercial. It's like it's like like he had just got out the shower and put on some like yeah, some oil. It's or something. lilac lotion. Yeah, like, like what's going like on? The, here? The, it had the, those Prince. colors on there. He was what was he sitting on? His ass. <laughs> but and then they yeah whatever. It, so yeah no not Ebony and Ivory and not that love sexy album. We went from Ebony and Ivory to Prince lilac lotion naked. <laughs> So no, it's a no for me on the uh, Jordan uh, Kanye collabo. But I realize I would be in the minority on that. Well, I can acknowledge that. Okay, yeah, and I think and I think just it would just be fantastic business, obviously, for both of them. That shoe. I mean, that, I wish the, that shoe was going to break the. Internet. I wish the best for everybody doing business and getting their bread. But I'm, I just like, no, nah, I'm good. And then and then Kanye always has a way, right, of just finding to to just make it work, right? You know, with Gap. Uh, he's you know he's, he's since he's joined their stock is up like like thirty uh, percent. Have you bought any of this stuff? No, but the stock, yes. You bought the stock. Anybody y'all bought the clothes? I haven't been in a Gap in a minute. I didn't even know the Gap still was around. Yeah, the, the Gap's around. They just did a he just uh, did a partnership with them in Balenciaga, I believe, with Gap and Balenciaga. I mean, I was just want to say Kanye is just like hey for all of the when it comes to like the actual art and the fashion and that part of it, he finds a way. Hey, listen. And the music, of course. Hey, listen. God bless him. God bless all of his strategic partners. His strategic partnerships. Would you do business with Kanye? It just depended on what it was. Okay, that's, that's a, fair. Because I have a, I have a, a very low tolerance for that level of. Um, after this many years of my career, where where you have to really pipe into, uh, some other person's ideas in their head yeah. that they're trying to get out, especially when you're one of the people trying to deliver them. It's just how easy could that be? Like if he said, "Look, I want to come on and do a segment on y'all show." Yeah, I would work with him in this capacity. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like, but I don't know if I could serve a uh, a role in his uh, his orbit that I do for other people. I don't know if I could do that. Okay, that's that's fair though, because I'm sure that he would probably come up with an idea that you would like. No, I, listen. A lot of times people come up with ideas all the time. It's how you when you're building things. It's how you get to them and how many hurdles. Do you have to cross to get to him dealing with people who are, uh, you know, he's one of those guys like, I just want to do it and don't care how you do it. <laughs> and then there's some poor person trying to figure out. How I want to live it. at the Mercedes Benz right. stadium. Right. Make it happen. And that's a call I would have had a hard time making yeah. on his behalf. <laughs> he lived there for like three weeks. 
like while games was going on in the whole night. <laughs> and I will say this: the fact that he was able to make it happen reflects negatively on me because I would have like been like, "Bro, can we just get a hotel?" Well, yeah, because I, mean, I mean, yeah, there was a there was a lot of promotion behind that free promotion, free publicity. That yeah. people just, I mean, just word of mouth. Yeah, it. I mean, people were like, "Yeah, he living down there." Get yeah, the no, that the was that was that was. Amazing. He pulled up in the bins and went into the bins. On on another note, um, a little bit closer to the sports topic. Let's go. Um, I saw that Shaq is suggesting that <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys uh, hire Deion Sanders to be their head coach, and I think it went as far as to say that they're not gonna get right till they get prime. Yeah, he went on his podcast with Jim Gray and said, "Hey, look, prime is the next is the it should be the next coach." Uh, don't they already have a coach, <laughs> Mike McCarthy? And yeah, so 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 the first that's the first problem is he, <laughs> he would, they would have there's to someone currently in, in the position. In, in the position, but and he said he you know he said he'd be able to hold those guys accountable. That was one of the things he said is like he's going to be the one to be able to hold those players accountable, and they won't get right and they'll get the bins, not the bins, but the what is it? What's the name of that stadium? Jerry's World, uh, AT and T Stadium, AT and T Rocking. You have AT and T yeah. Rocking. I look okay. So I I see this actually two different ways. The first way is I I think Deion Sanders found his niche a while ago uh, with the truth camps, uh, helping youth, helping the uh, the youth, and uh, you know the, the stuff he tried to do with Noel Devine. Um, he tried to help um, uh, the receiver that the Cowboys had, Des, Des Bryant. Des Bryant. Des Bryant, which that was a massive failure. Not massive failure, but it was a hey, maybe it was a massive failure, but it wasn't because of Deion Sanders. But he's I think he's found his niche, particularly with uh, JSU. Now, here's but if he let's say he got offered the job, I don't think he could turn it down because that's too that's too big of an opportunity. But I don't think he'd be successful. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it, I, think I, it I makes don't think you sense. can turn it. I don't think he can turn that down. But I also think that he of course not. But you couldn't turn it down either. Correct. I couldn't turn it down, but. That doesn't mean those are shoes that we should be wearing at this moment. It's a, it's a, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, that's a weird spot to be in because if Jerry said, yo, if you want to be the, the coach, it's yours. So you're going to, you would leave a program that you, you have something actually really special going on yeah. to go to. And it's, it's just hard. And I, and I think that the way, the way that he leads is part of the part of the way that he leads is through the people being wrapped up in the fact that it's prime. 100%. But when you, uh, and that hap- that that can happen when when kids are trying to get somewhere. But like when he tried to do the same thing with Des Bryant, Des already had millions, right? You know, and he asked him to well, one of the stories. And this is not anything, no nothing private. He 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 went to Prime, said, "Hey, can you get me, you know, a deal with with Under Armour?" Prime says, "Yeah, I can get you a deal with Under Armour." Goes and gets him the deal. He said, "The first day of practice, Des Bryant is wearing Nikes." The first, the very first day, and then there's that, and so you, so when you're trying to lead guys who you know just basically are you know, have much more, they 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 feel like they've arrived. It's harder to penetrate those guys, yeah. Without that, oh man, hey, well, I'm just trying to be where you at, and and you have that, yeah, in in college, yeah. No, listen, I I think first of all, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, but I am a big fan of what uh, Prime is doing in uh, in uh, down at Jackson State amazing work because i know that as much as it is football it is uh life like lives um kids um restoring pride in our community and the things that we build that we have and this is never just as a disclaimer anytime we talk about race it's not at the expense of anybody else it's really just understanding that we belong to something that we have to contribute to in order to grow and i think uh, Prime understands that, and he went to the source. He's in Mississippi with kids, some of which are now going to be on a trajectory to play NFL, some are not. But a lot of the messages that he teaches them is like how to go back home and avoid the traps. Yeah, how to go back to your community, how to go back to your hood. And I love the way that he speaks to them because he doesn't he doesn't talk over their heads. He he deals with them like he's one of them, and I don't see how that translates to NFL coaching right now. I'm not saying that De- Dion doesn't have the the makeup to coach at that level. I'm just a fan of what he's doing there now. Yeah. And I would love for him to stay there. And I would love to see other players. And we've talked about this, the Ray Lewis's and people like that to go 
and to be a part of the HBCUs and get even just one conference, just get the swag and be like, yo, we bring some star power down here. We're going to put 20 NFL players because this is not for our younger audience. Like when I grew up way before you guys, there were, and we didn't look at it like HBCUs. We just heard these things as normal. Like, uh, 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 uh Jerry Rice going to Prairie View A&M, or Walter Payton going to Jackson State, a Jackson State alum, um, Jackie Slater, uh, Ricky Jackson. Like, there were guys that were Pro Bowl players every year that were coming in from HBCUs. And the list, I mean, even like as recently as Michael Strahan, guys like that, HBCU. So the production of NFL players and guys that can go is not new. We're restoring that, restoring some pride, to go, hey, no, it's cool to go to Jackson State. It's okay. You can be a part of the the Walter Payton lineage and the guys that even Dion's bringing now. That's just going to add to it. So there's going to be a restoration in the pride. Yeah, and I think um, that, and I, particularly when you start talking about the pride, the self worth, the and what he, and you start talking about affecting lives, which extends obviously to the whole city of Jackson, Mississippi. Um, that is, you're not doing that in Dallas. No. And I think that, you know, where he's needed most, obviously, and where he can make the biggest impact. And and what I mean by where he can make the biggest impact, by him being prime. Right. Um, it just means more to a place like that. So I hope I hope that he that <laughs> this is just talk. But sometimes, you know, these things have a way of <laughs> well, I, taking on I a life of their it, own. When I first read it, I just charged it to... It, it felt like barbershop talk to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it just felt like something that, you know, somebody is being, you know what they you know what the cowboys need to do? They need to get they need to get prime. But you know and you know what's interesting is this this the, this conversation does not happen. It seems like Prime essentially took the risk by going to, you know, Jackson and bringing his brand and bringing his Right, because nobody saw that coming. Yeah. Yes. Nobody saw that coming. Like when he said I was like, "Oh, snap." Like cuz normally you hear the buzz those of us that follow sports and like listen to other people's podcasts and stuff, you go, you hear stuff that came out of nowhere with him showing up. And, and I'm like, I was like, well, and then, and then for him to actually, for him to actually like what, he only lost two games. Yeah. No, play well. Like, listen, he's going to have an impact. He knows football, but he's going to equally impact the university. We talked about this. He filled up the stadium. He restored pride in the program, and then that's going to go into other programs, the teams that they play, because now there will be a rivalry. There were two teams that beat them. They will really want to – Jackson State will really want to avenge those losses. Yeah, South Carolina those, State, yeah. Those fields are going to be rocking, like, um, when those when those revenge games yeah. come up. So. And, and also, you, you're you going to have the uh, economies affected, at least for one weekend, when right. they play role games. Yes. when no And, like, and, and add to the fact that – Dion, you know, has a national profile with the uh, Aflac commercials with with uh, Saban, which I think, I think is so strategic on 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 Prime's part that he is, he's effectively using, he's upping his profile because he's not just here; he's going up in terms of how people see him, and then he's going, come look over here, look what we're doing over here. Right, I love it. Right. I love it, and I hope he stays. Listen, I know if you've ever been through. Jackson, Mississippi. You ever been through Mississippi? It's like, it's it's not. I don't want to be no disrespect. My 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 dad's from Mississippi, but it's he's compromising something to be there. I'll say that he lived in Dallas or lived in the Dallas area. He's lived a life of a millionaire. So going in into Jackson, Mississippi is is he's making a sacrifice. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound surface, but I understand that what he's doing, he's truly giving of himself because he does not have to live his post football days in Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, and, and like nobody black should have to live in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, not in so, twenty twenty. So for him to voluntarily yeah. go there uh, is a bit of a shows a, a selflessness that I don't I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I I mean. <laughs> I could do it. Hey, suit yourself, Prime. <laughs> <laughs> we love what you're doing, Prime. <laughs> Let me know when you're gonna be in like, Atlanta. Like, you're like, yeah, you're like, you can't just, you know, come down and do it at Morehouse in Atlanta. You can't Prime, when you coming out to LA, man. <laughs> like you there's a lot of other cities that have black <laughs> black colleges. You didn't have to go to Jackson, <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, um, but no, nah, like for real, shout out to Prime on that. Um, a lot of respect for what he's doing and Shaq, pump the brakes on that. Um Okay, we got to – man, I don't even know if there's a way that we can have this conversation without me sounding just overly critical, but 
your man Antonio Brown is out here. I don't want to say he's doing the rounds, but he's done uh, the. I think the I am I am athlete podcast. I want to say a couple of days. Uh, the, I believe, or maybe they've shot all once and then they're just kind of chopping it on the twentieth. Yeah. Uh, I just got to ask the question: Is he nuts? Well, that's a that's a. I mean that that was the like the, seriously that was the question that they uh, essentially asked or they talked about on that podcast, which basically you know came down to uh, mental health. And- Wait, hold on a second. Am I gonna get in trouble? Cause I just said, is he nuts? See, because I'm from a different era. Like, we just, like, we call nuts nuts. Like, crazy, crazy. Like, now it's like so, mental health. Like, now we got to, like, walk a little softer with that. But I don't want to I don't want to seem like I'm not sensitive to the way the world's changed. But he be tripping. Well, I, I mean, okay. So, so it's, it's, it's layered for me. Okay. So, you go, okay. Is he, is he crazy? I, you know, to answer that, for me to answer that question, I think it's a little bit above my pay grade. And obviously above my scholastic acumen, we grad we covered. I graduated in summer school to one point two five, to which my wife said that I. She's like, I didn't even know that was possible. She's like, I did not know that you can graduate in the ones. And yeah. I said, it's a D. Yeah, I was like, that's past it. She was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I'm like, you look. I'm, yeah. I didn't. I didn't yeah, just drop get out. out of here. I got my. I got yeah. my paper now. Yeah. Anyway, um, but when you okay, so you, you when you when you look at him going live, uh, for seventeen minutes in the Steelers locker room. Yeah. When you look at him, uh, you know, while, while Coach Tomlin is talking. So for those of you that don't know, that the locker room is a sacred place, particularly it was after a win where, you know, there's some emotionally charged language. You're getting ready to try to fire your guys up for next week for the next opponent, which happened to be uh, Tom Brady. And he just decided to go live and let all of what Tomlin was saying out. Yeah. You're not that's that's a taboo for those that don't know. You're not that's a taboo that's for a any violation. level of football, any level of sports. Any yes. And so he, he went live and you know, and Tomlin, you know, he was saying he didn't say anything crazy, but enough there was bullet bulletin boy material, which Tom Brady don't need. Yeah. Then, you know, you have the issue with him threatening to retire over and it's there was stuff in between that. But him threatening he signed he went to Oakland, signed he was the highest paid receiver in the game. And threatened to retire because he didn't want to change his helmet. Yeah. Like, like But I, you're leaving out some important factors here. Money. Bread. He's left tens of millions of dollars on the table for behavior that seems to be easy to correct. Well that was well that well that was, you know, going into that and that was the point, right? Yeah. He was threatening to retire. Right. Right. Because he didn't want to change, you know, his helmet. Right. Uh, and then you know you look at you look at him rec- again secretly recording a conversation between him and Gruden, right? And putting that out, uh, and also publishing the uh, screen caps of yeah uh, of the letter when he was getting fined by Mike yeah. Mayock. Um, you know, just all of these things, all of these things, and then you have the most recent. I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff. He had sexual assault allegations. Where we those were just allegations, as far as I know. Uh, but then you look at this most recent uh, situation with him leaving MetLife Field, disrobing. He's disrobing. It was cold. If you look at the footage that day, it was cold. If people, if people in New York had on Parkers, had on the middle you know, of the game, the middle. Of, he left in the middle of the game, yeah. citing that you know, for, for those for those of you that haven't heard, he said that Bruce Arium told him to get the f out of here, um, because he wanted him to go in the in the game. Antonio Brown was saying he had an ankle issue. My issue, my only issue, not my only issue, but when you when he was leaving the game, he took his shirt off, pads off shirtless and he was doing jumping jacks on the way out and but if your ankle hurt why, why, why would you be doing that i can't i mean i don't even like doing jumping jacks with a regular ankle yeah so and then he and then he jogged off and he looked he looked spry he looked fleet of foot yeah and he seemed to be moving around the country pretty pretty easily on that on that hurt ankle so yeah I, so i just okay so okay i ain't saying he crazy i'm just saying all oh, that's crazy and if he was my friend, and he was the one doing it, yeah. I, so and, and if he was my friend, okay. If he was my friend, kind of like Pete Davidson, like if he was my friend, he would be the crazy guy. I'd be like, and I would tell him, to, "Man, y'all ass crazy as shit." Like he, we, when I saw that, I him Wait, going you think up. Pete the Davidson's field, crazy. No, I'm just saying, if oh. he was actually on meth, oh, you know what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Like I, if he wanted me to keep it a secret, yeah. you know, I'd be more sensitive to it. Yeah. So and I'm like, hey, if you, you like, like he's the crazy guy in the crew. Like you'd be like, hey, man, we finna go out tonight. Yeah. Don't be acting. Don't be bringing that crazy shit around to the damn. You know. Yeah. What I mean? Don't be taking. Oh, you clothes. don't even, I, like. Yeah, that's maybe where we different. I don't even call that guy. 
Well, what like my, I have a zero tolerance for that. My point is though is that if I knew him personally, I'd be like, "Hey man, y'all ass crazy." And if he tried to refute that, I would say, "No, you you're, you're actually crazy." Yeah, I mean, like, you I, get the help. And I think that I think Tampa Bay was I think he said this on the podcast that they were trying to get him help uh give him money to get help for his mental health. And I think he thought that was funny or something. And I'm like, "No, it sounds like they're taking what they're seeing seriously and trying not to just take from you because any team will take your touchdowns and take your receptions because you can still get separation they're trying to bring something back to you and you just like threw it away like and i i'm not one of those people be like see you got to understand it's two sides no it's one side to this well because if okay you're tripping they're not that's the end of it because this is a because everybody goes okay well yeah well there that's why he left because bruce arian told him to get the f out of here no, that's it's not it's not him leaving. It's the fashion in which you left. Like if if, he, if Bruce Aaron told him to get the f out of here, he just would have calmly walked off the, the the field. None of none. I won't say none of this conversation, but a large portion of this conversation wouldn't wouldn't be taking place. Why are you disrobing? Why well, are you doing jumping? They were lining up, and he was in the end zone doing jumping jacks on the way out of the and, out and of look, the stadium. You you've played sports. I've played sports. If a coach, if you, I've never had that type type of exchange with a coach. But if a coach said, "Man, get the f out of here," you're in practice. You know that means your day is over. You know I've been kicked out of practice before. Um, but if you're in a game, he's just saying, "Get out, get out my coaching space. Go sit on the bench." And then you know you're gonna get dealt with. Either you might get cut, you might get reprimanded. But what you don't do is mess up your game check that week. In the next week, because the minute that he started taking his stuff off, game check off. What possesses you to go, oh, get the F out of here? Just you go know sit what? on the bench and then go in the locker room. I feel like taking off all my clothes. Yeah, like you don't you don't even leave the field. You just go sit on the bench. And then if the coach wants to make an issue of you still being on the bench, then that's another thing. But what I'm not doing is I'm not messing up the the valid contract that I have between me and the organization. Well, and that's where the crazy come in. Exactly. Because what I so- don't, what I, as a person who represents talent, what I don't tolerate is playing with the money. So I'm not going to say that he's crazy, but it, oh, uh, okay, this is as far as I'll go. And if T- Antonio Brown was sitting here, I would say it. I think that there should be an event, some sort of checking out. There should be some sort of, we should, we should just at least just, let's just make sure. If, yeah. you, if you're really that confident, let's just, let's just let go see somebody. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, real quick, I wanted to do, uh, I, I just wanted to shout out uh, my man, Joe Barino, who uh, is a friend of mine, and he's a uh, CFO of a, of a publishing company that I do business with. He brought something to my attention uh, about the Kansas City uh, Kansas City Buffalo Bills game. I know you saw that game. It was an amazing did, football game. I did. And he, he asked the question, and I think it's a fair question, is how can you kick the ball off in an NFL game when the foot hits the ball, the guys are running down, guys are making contact, they're setting up blocks, blocks. Clock is not running until the ball is touched. Maybe three seconds, right, from the kick to there. Why isn't that clock running at three seconds? I think the NFL needs to look at that because it's the only play in football where it doesn't, the play doesn't start on the snap, on the initial action. Well, b- well, there's no snap, right? So it's the assi- it's essentially the. But same you would as- think that the minute the ball was kicked, no, because it's like inbounding, right? But the difference we talked to me and I discussed this. The difference between inbounding and that is there's still a clock on the inbound. Yeah, there, it's a five count, so you have a count on that, right? And then the, then the minute that it's touched in, so there's no dead space where there's no accountability for the time, right? But but you don't need a clock on the kickoff because as soon as they blow the whistle, three seconds later the ball is kicked. Right, but what I'm saying is so once the ball is being kicked, played. but once the ball is kicked, like if you kick the ball, let's say you onside kick, or you'll say you squib kick it, like and it hits like you're ten yards away. Yeah. Like if they're saying it's touch, but like if you're kicking it deep, there's guys hitting each other, guys running past each other, guys sprinting. Football's being played. Basketball's being time. played, right? You're guarding yeah. a guy, you're trying but to get position. But there's still a clock running. But you don't need that clock because you're kicking the ball off. Whereas, whereas if there's no clock running, you could just run around until somebody gets open. Right. right. But but you can't endlessly because it's a five count. Correct. 
But that's th- what I'm saying. But it's not. There's no time that's like unaccounted for. But that's why there's a five second the clock because right. you could just run around. Whereas right. with the kickoff, you're gonna kick the ball off. There is no. I'm just gonna wait for a little while. You're gonna kick the ball off. But there's still that wait in that when that ball's in the air and football's being played. Well, I, okay. So I'll just. I'm on the side of it makes sense. For I don't think it makes sense, but I think it's worth them looking at. There's a there's a couple things that came out of that game that I think is worth looking at. Um, the overtime rules are still. How you feel about that overtime? You know they got the ball, they took it down, they scored. The other team didn't get a chance. Um, I think, and I, I'm fine with it in in regular season, but I think in the playoffs, I do feel like there should be some sort of tweak to that because I think, it, yeah. it felt because in the playoffs, right? There's a lot at stake. Well, not only that though, you know, in in the in the um, in the regular season, you could be kicking off to. Gardner Minshew, you could be kicking off to, right. in the playoffs. You kicking off to Matt Stafford. Yeah. You kicking off to Tom Brady. Right. You kicking, and on the other side of that is normally another pretty damn good quarterback. Right. And given the fact that the rules have changed so much to benefit, like every single rule change. You correct me if I'm wrong. Over the past 15 years, has done nothing but benefit the offense. Right. So if you're gonna compromise the game in that way, then I think at least in the playoffs there should be some sort of concession made for. Uh, okay, you went down, you scored a touchdown. Uh, you know, and I don't know how you fix it, but I do think that the offense on the other side should get a, get the same opportunity because, you know, hey, look, you win that toss, and it, because it's hard to stop just the offense. Period in the NFL yeah. nowadays. Now you start talking about giving it to you know a Mahomes, giving it giving it to a you know a Justin Herbert, or giving it to a Kyle, Kyler Murray. All these guys, you know, Joe Burrow. Man, I mean, it's hard. I mean, you saw the scope. Yeah, I mean the Bills had the number one, well, if not number one, no, they had defense, number one defense, and it was yeah. it was just points everywhere. Well, the point, but a lot of the scoring started like deep deep in the fourth quarter. It actually wasn't a terribly defended game up until that, but both defenses got gas, so it was going to be advantage team who won the toss because in the last, I think Gabriel Davis just scored again. I mean, they said <laughs> they said that um, I think it was Mahomes had 177 yards passing after the two-minute warning, between the two-minute warning and the end of the game. So it definitely started to light up. I mean, we saw – But it's uh, like it's like when the, was the levees broke. How long 20, can we hold it? It was 25 points scored combined in the last two minutes of the game. Amazing. So both quarterbacks had it going. But it also made me wonder this too, is why do offenses wait? You see this all the time, even with bad offenses. To, even go, to, with bad to go to hurry up? To, not just to go to hurry up, but to go to the urgency of offense that you go, look, we're going to take out those plays that we know get it going. Or 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 just applying pressure to the defense. Hey, we up. Yeah. On the line, on the line, on the yeah, line. Like, we, just something that, because I see it happen all the time. I'll be like, well, we could have been doing like, that. been doing this whole game. And, and maybe there's a legitimate football reason. But I think sometimes, like, the whole – I think the other thing, too, I'm jumping all over, but Buffalo is using these analytics, and they lost the game, so it's hard to – you know me, I'm all about the, sort of the final thing. But they went for fourth down on some times when it was just like, y'all really going for fourth down here? Y'all really doing that? And I think it's hard to defend a good offense four straight downs. But if you're so fearful of giving up points, then you punt and go, oh, you know, convention says we punt. But if you have trust in your offense, man, if I'm if I'm playing Kansas City, I'm playing Buffalo, I don't know if I can stop you four times in a row. Right. Yeah. Like, why not go for it all the time like Madden? <laughs> like old Madden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I'll just say, you know, I felt watching, you know, Kelsey catch that ball in the right corner of the end zone, at least from my vantage point, it was right corner, depending on the Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was what, right what side the, uh, the camera set up on. But and, 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 if, and, the, and it flashed to Josh Allen's, you know, uh, to him on the sideline, you felt a little empty. Um, just the fact that he didn't get the opportunity, just from what we just saw, he didn't get the opportunity to take the field. Um, but I guess you know that's you know that's the obviously the way that the rules. Well, he are could now. get mad. Well, no, if he want to be mad, well, be I'm mad, saying I felt empty. Or, oh, oh, okay, fair enough. Not if, him. If, if I'm he, just saying, yeah, as a fan, if, yeah. I felt empty because I, I didn't get a chance. I think if the Buffalo to... Bills contingency wants to feel some type of way, feel some type of way about your special team coach that elected to not squib kick it, get that clock running because they need it every second of the 13 to get down the field. And Leslie Frazier 
85 Bears player who I like a lot did not get in the right defenses uh, on those two plays. I don't know. Like, you don't have to worry about a touchdown, so I don't know why they were so deep. And then you look at what the the, the same thing, uh, relatively speaking, happened yeah. uh, in the Tampa. In the Tampa, in the Tampa, in the, in the, uh, Rams, Rams game, game yeah. where Cooper Cup yeah. just, you know, got loose and they kicked yeah. the field goal and, you know, it was 30 to 27. You know, game over. Uh, not in not in the overtime. Right. Um. You 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 watching. You know these offenses with these elite quarterbacks able to move the ball. I don't know how he got deep. Like how does he? How oh, does that? Guy, I know how, how he got deep. He deep. They man. they slot blitz. Like they nobody blitz. behind you. you they know? blitz. Well, here's the thing that like like and I told. I think I t- I don't know if I told you this. Told somebody else, but you bring pressure from the guy that's in press man on. What was this year the, the number one receiver in football in yards, touchdowns, and catches? You blitz that guy, leaving him in one on one coverage with a safety. Yeah. There's a nine year old who plays Madden and knows not to do that. Yeah. yeah Dead that. ass. Like, come on. Like, you don't, like, even if, and here's the thing even if Cup is in a thing, you bracket coverage him. And then you bring pressure from somewhere else. You uh, and if you see him go where you bring in the pressure, you do the. I think the Bears used to do this. Erlocker used to do that. I mean, get out of that and get into something else. You you see that you got to get out of that. So he was. So Brady was thirty for fifty four, one touchdown, one pick, which is one of his more inefficient playoff games. Yeah. Do you think that with Godwin or Brown, probably Brown, who you know was obviously the uh, player that was more most recently with the squad. Yeah, if he plays, do you think the injuries or the lack of depth at the receiver position caught up with them in that game? No question. Uh, you look at the second receiver on the squad, uh, and I mean receiver, was Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller, yeah. With and Scotty four, Miller played four, all year. Uh, he's 5'8". Yeah. yeah. Scotty Miller is a good player for what he does, but he, you certainly don't want to be relying on him in a playoff game. The, like the number one receiver as far as catches was Leonard Fournette. Yeah. With nine receptions. Yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, I was like, if 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 Antonio Brown plays or Chris Godwin, I think they win that game. Yeah, I mean, thirty I mean, for fifty four. And well, you, you give you give the Rams defense a little credit uh, too, but because they took away the one guy that they knew that you had to go to, which would simplify the defense, given the fact that they which, didn't have that threat over which there. Which Tampa Bay didn't do on at the end of the game. It's like the one guy because it wasn't going to be Odell Beckham Jr. Odell Beckham Jr. ain't got past the defense in three years. But it's still Odell. You play them differently with Odell over there and you have Cooper over you there. You put in that situation where there's 30 seconds to go in the but game. But it ain't 5'8", Scotty Miller. It's but Odell it's, freaking No, Beckham. I'm saying, okay, if you're game planning, I understand what you're saying. It's 32 seconds left to go in the game. Account for Scotty. Account for Cooper Cup. You don't blitz the guy covering him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like account for him. Yeah. If you got a man up with somebody, let Odell Beckham Jr. make his first big play in three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let let that be that moment. I mean, I but agree you don't with let you, there, you don't let but, Cooper Cup do that. But, but, but in, I mean, in thirty two seconds to go, Scotty Miller is. Just... Yeah, but but you know what? It's next man up though. Like like the it reason is, but I mean, I mean, but the next man can't be five eight. I mean, I, and, and listen, I, I don't. I don't run. The, I don't run the personnel for the Bucks. What I'm saying is, the answer to your initial question is yes. The the depth on that right receiver core began to hurt them, but you, you blame Antonio Brown. Like Antonio Brown had a position Absolutely. on that team, and 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 I don't think if you're. Let me be clear. They say he went out partying directly after that. I don't think if you're the organization, you feel any type of way. Like if somebody listen. If you run something and you're building something and there's somebody who don't, I don't care how much talent they have, culture is everything. I'd rather lose the game in Tampa Bay and maintain the culture because once you let one guy go off like that, then you got chaos on your sidelines forever in a day. And it takes a long time to get that culture out of your well, And that's, of, and that's the thing line. that you, that Tom Brady is not going to, uh, well, I will say he's not going to function it, but he won't. He won't he'll return leave. To, to lawlessness. Yeah, he'll leave. He'll be like, okay, we tried it. It didn't work. But if you yeah. want that to be here, did you want to do that? Then we out. But he's coming from the ultimate structure. Where, and, and then he's in the middle of a game watching a guy do what? Yeah, come on. That's madness, bro. Like, he's like, what? That's madness. That ain't how we how we done it <laughs> up there in, uh, in, 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 in E. Yeah. Um, listen, let's, um, you, you hit me the other day with a, a segment that I thought was really cool that we're going to get in here at the end. Uh, it's called In Real Life. And the way I understood you to explain this was 
there's scenarios that happen in movies, TV shows that people act a certain type of way. But what if we were in those same situations in real life where we act the same sort of way? So uh, you ha- so let's get into a scenario. So you pose a question to me, and then I'll po- come one to you, and then you bring one back to me. We got three. Of them. Well, it came it came to me actually on the heels of of thinking, you know, should Brady retire? Right. Okay. So I was I was thinking like, should, you know, should should Tom Brady retire? And you know, he led the league in touchdown passes. Mm-hmm. He led the league in. Uh, in passing yards overall. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only reason we're even questioning should he retire is because of his age, because it ain't because of his play. Right. Right. I mean, when you lead the league in all the, the best categories, right. chances are you're, you're, you know, that he was the best. Right. So, I, you know, I'm like, man, like, what, what what a great way to leave out. You know, I was like, you don't want to go out like Rocky. You know, right. Rocky had one fight too many, and then he's up there in the, in the street fight getting his ass whipped by, you know, a street fighter. And, uh, and then I started thinking – you know, I was like, because the one fight that was too many was the was the was the one against Drago. Then I started thinking about why, like, what, who in their right mind, after watching what Drago did to Apollo Creed, what goes now? Nah, I gotta fight you. Like you sat there and watched Drago beat the, and you ain't even beat Apollo like that. Like you just yeah. barely scraped. You got you got you got one draw and you barely scraped by. No, he got a loss. Oh, that's right. He that's lost, right. That's he right. Lost to Rocky one. He lost and the Rocky one. It was one. basically the other he, one was a fluke. Because he got the decision, and then yeah. you got up like just barely before before yeah, the, the thing. And Rocky so, too. so you didn't. So then you watch Drago. And then he kills this man. He kill him, and then you yeah. go, okay, well, hey, now now I got to get in here with now you. Now you got the juice, and he was retired too. Yeah. So not only you gonna get in there with him, but then then he was like, you going to go over to Russia to fight him? Yeah. And so I think I was like, man, would I would I do that? Like what I? Would, I'm like I know. Okay, if I if I if I was, and then you was like five eight. Like Drago was like six eleven, well yeah. And I, so I'm saying to myself, "Hey man, man, Apollo, my boy." But I not only am I not going to Russia, I ain't getting there with that big ass white boy. Well, I just think it just come down to the money. Like, like <laughs> I mean, it's just it's what's the check. <laughs> like it's the money. Like I'm, I mean, on the principles in which they made the screen. Did he fight it for free though? I'm not. I don't know if he did that. Wait. Yeah, he they asked some, him in the press conference. Yeah, he's tripping. <laughs> he's tripping. Like, and then, and then, so, so, so it's like, all right. Because then I started thinking, okay, he went over there. He won the fight. But, like, if you're going to take vengeance for your homeboy, don't you got to kill him? Like, <laughs> like he just lost. Like, and then yeah. it, it, it wasn't even that bad of a beatdown. He just, like, he just lost the fight. He won and then gave this big speech about changing. But, like, yeah. Drago's still alive. And your boy is still dead. Yeah. So, I, but he didn't kill him in the. He didn't kill Apollo in the street. Like, he beat him up, and he died. Like, you know, he said if he dies, he dies. Like, he but he beat him up in the sport. But I'm thinking you got to die now. I'm thinking. If I, yeah, but you might not have that ability to make a man die with your hands. <laughs> like you make it seem like he need to pull out the gat. Did they still say gat? Did I age myself? <laughs> Um, pull out the, pull the out. chopper and, <laughs> and 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 kill him. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, well, well yeah. But then why fight him? Like, what be, what good is no, beating him? No, be? I, for the premises that they delivered That's in the, the film, absolutely, I'm not well, going Rocky, to fight. How much are you making for the fight? Nothing. Yeah, that's. See, let me tell you something, because that's where I come in and go. <laughs> he, he's, we're getting a check. Uh, and this press conference, I come in. He's in the press conference, like, nah, we're not doing that. Yeah, so anyway, that's nah, why I don't play. Like, nah, no. it's, it's the money. I would have got the money. And then, up. and then the part, he wasn't even in the fly part of Russia. And, nah, I mean, is there a fly part of Russia? I heard my, Moscow is popping. I mean, I mean, yeah, if you into, if you Putin, <laughs> like, I'm sure it's popping for Putin. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's super popular for him. Yeah, he, he you know? he's just out these in the Moscow streets just doing what he want to do. Yeah, you know, like, <laughs> get, absolutely getting it in. Um, so the one I have for you was uh, in in Beverly Hills Cop One when uh, Michael Tandino shows up, who's a friend of Axel Foley, Eddie Murphy's character, to Detroit. Breaks in his house. Eddie's been out. Oh yeah, he Tendino did. Tendino comes home. He comes home. Eddie he sees. Did. Eddie he took his gun. Eddie out, draws man. down. Right. Tendino sitting there eating cereal or whatever he was doing, and goes, "Oh, you my best friend." Woo, 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 woo. So we, to me, we already off to a bad start. You almost got shot. <laughs> We're already off to a bad start because you're not just going. 
I don't even want nobody to come visit my house without being announced. You showed up without being announced. Now you sitting in my house. So we already got a problem. So Broke I'm immediately in. gonna be like, all right, cool, man. Let me I'll let you let me get myself together. I'm gonna check in with you later. Where you staying at? So I'm already asking you to leave. Then we go kick it, we get drunk, and you open up a bag of of German bear bonds that I know you don't supposed to have your hands on. Flag number two. He's not German. Lastly, you get killed in my hallway. I'm still alive. You're dead. <laughs> the the inspector Todd comes in and says, this was a professional hit because they wasn't worried about your little narrow ass. Quote, unquote. I didn't just come in here off the, out the cotton fields or whatever. That's what Inspector Todd said. So I don't know what registered in his mind to say, I got to go avenge Michael Tandino's death. Would the, I, well, he got hit in the head. He might not have been thinking straight. Okay. But he, and then he drove a, then that's the other thing, bad the, decisions. He drove a Nova from Detroit to LA. Yo, shout out to Nova. It made it. It, in real life, it doesn't make real, it. That's what I'm talking life. about. In real life, in real life, that that don't even make it to to Pontiac, <laughs> Michigan, to the Silver Dome. To, yeah, it doesn't even make it there. So there's a lot of things that I, I was looking at that going. Cause see, I'm your judgmental friend. Like I'm I'm the judgmental friend to all my friends. So I'm already judging. What? You, why are you here? What are you doing? Why do you have these bonds? Blah blah blah. And the minute they be like. They kill him and be like, oh, I guess it has something to do with them, them German bear bonds. <laughs> it's an animal. So now I'm looking at it going, well, they know where I live. Let me move. Let me. I'm, I'm not going to Beverly Hills where you came from. I'm going the opposite direction. I'm getting away and letting things calm down. Man, rest in peace, bro. Yeah. I. So we've actually talked about this just a little bit before. Not in that aspect, but just like Michael Tandino was so stupid. Yeah. And it just seemed to me they like him and Eddie wouldn't even him and Axel Foley wouldn't even been friends. Right. Like Mike, Michael Tan, Tandino was was, a, you know, he w- was a meathead, essentially. He yeah. Was, he wasn't he wasn't anybody that was that was like, you know, he was going to be friends with. And I also was kind of like, you a police officer, you ain't got no better security system. for He just broke in your crib with like a bobby pin. Like, yeah. what, what, like what are we doing? So I so. So yes, so that that's so, but okay, but okay, is there so, a friendship? So, so let's get question. past that. Yes, I pose a question to you like that: Is there a friendship that you have that, with all of those circumstances being exactly how they were, that you're getting in your Nova and you're driving to Beverly Hills to avenge his death, his killing? You're going to find Victor so Maitland. I'm single, like Axel. I'm saying yes. You hell have, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh hell yeah. You're a better I mean, friend than me. Like, like, like if that was, if that was, you know, uh, Walker. Yeah. If, yes, I'm going, and I've got to find who that. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. See, I'm, yeah. I'm not from, I'm not. Yeah. From I'm, that I'm, club. I'm gassing up the Nova with Let It. With, I gotta find Let It. It's definitely Let It. <laughs> it's definitely find. the old school Let yeah. It. Let It gas, like all the lead. But I may just try to rent a car or something. I don't know if I'm taking the Nova. Well, that's see, that's what I'm saying. Like it was unrealistic because you that that Nova not gonna make it. And he was riding down one of them streets. It was Wilshire. Nova. It was Wilshire. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he's riding down. He riding down, riding down Wilshire, yeah. uh, and and yeah, so so that was rough. And 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 it was funny because you know he gets there and he knows the the, the girl Jenny Summers, J- Jenny Summers, and you know so he's. How got do some, I know these names so readily? And Serge, Serge. Well, he didn't know Serge. Yeah, but Serge, Serge was, was working made, there. Do you want, what did he say? Dude? What do you want? He, wanted, he asked him if he wanted espresso. I want espresso. With a little lemon twist. Yeah, with a lemon twist. I make it myself. <laughs> yeah, I would. So you so so if your See, friend got murdered in your in your situation, if, and you're a police officer, you ain't going. If my kids got murdered under those circumstances, I'm not going to avenge. I'm not avenging. I'm not. I'm not. This ain't the wild wild west. I'm not avenging no. Like I'm gonna mourn. <laughs> so you ain't. But going I'm out. not avenging. So you definitely ain't going out there for Bogomil. And, nah, I'm not. I mean, well, Bogomil was alive, though. Yeah, but he got blown to smithereens. 
But I'd be like, man, we can we can team up when you get up out of this hospital. <laughs> we can team up and I'll, you know, do some investigator work, you know, try to help you figure it out. But you looking at the mud and you know, the the, the, the alphabet, try to break the alphabet codes and all that. This is a tough one. This, yeah, like I'll do that. <laughs> But I'm going, you talking about packing a gun, like I'm going to investigate yeah. so I can kill. Who's on the case? Who's on the case? Yeah, no. Nah. It's different out here now, nah. Axel. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Axel, Axel dipped. Yeah. And broke in his house. Yeah. That's a, that's the a thing, I guess, from Detroit. Yeah, they bro, he broke in his house. No, nah, I'm not doing that. With like, the daughter and the daughter. Because, and so I, this is what always tripped me out. He was in the, in, in his computers, right? Was, was he in the computer? Yeah. Uh, Axel Foley? Yeah. Bogam- this is two. Bogomil's daughter comes in. And says, I'm about to go take a shower. That to me, that's a sign. <laughs> I'm just saying. But if you go like, to investigate the 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 uh the, the alphabet mar- crimes, yeah. why would you get sidetracked? I'm just saying, cause she said, Hey, I, I was all about trying to figure it out. You, you tell me you're gonna take a shower. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> you know? Hey, hey, look at I'm I'm gonna see about your daughter, make sure she's straight about this shower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is that water cold why, enough in why, there? Why, why is that water? Why is that water? lays lifeless. Hey, in the hey hospital. Look, look, I ain't no doctor. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. I'm figure out what the alphabet situation. But I got. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Listen, I'm not. I, I tell you like this. I'm not going. I'm. I'm not going. I'm not going because I'm. I'm. I'm judging every step of the way. I'm judging his choices. Like, why are you breaking my? I'm still mad. Even when I found out he's dead, I'm still mad that he broke in my house. I'm still like this, 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 this broke in my crib. Like <laughs> what? Yeah, and I'm still tripping that Je- Jenny, you just finna get in the shower, huh? Not Jenny. <laughs> Jenny Summers wasn't getting in the shower. I mean, whatever his daughter name was. I forget her. You name. finna just get in the shower, huh? Why I'm just right here. <laughs> like that's that's a green light. But you like can't get right or something? You just <laughs> you can't get right. You just looking. Hey, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, look at here. We all uh, we stressed out right now. No, nah, <laughs> no, but I think I just think there's so many things that happen in uh, TV and film that movies are hinged on that I just think in real life terms just wouldn't happen. Yeah, like I was I was saying um, when I was doing this, I was thinking about um, different strokes. And if I if I got the story the backstory right, um, Mr. Drummond adopted Arnold and Willis because I think did Willis's mom did they, the kids' mom used to clean their house. Oh, I, you know what? I don't I know was, I because I just like that was nice of them to get adopt, adopted. I was too young to want to know. Right, I think happened. the backstory was I know like, Webster got adopted because they him and his dad played, played football, football together. together. Yeah, was his dad Walter Payton? No, his dad wasn't Walter Payton <laughs> in that. Nah. Oh, okay. You hey the the level of disrespect you <laughs> serving my legends today on this show. I'm just saying keep, Walter, keep Walter, Walter, and Michael and Jordan and all of keep them names out Michael your mouth. Michael and Jordan. Yeah, you you focus on Dominique, Mark, Grace. William Andrew, William Andrews, and what was that little quarterback y'all had? Uh, Bartkowski, Steve Bartkowski. You focus on Bartkowski. The Grits Blitz. Yes, and Jerry Glanville. You focus on your ATL and your man LeBron. Tommy Nobis. And your man Bron. Tommy Nobis was the first draft pick by the Falcons. No one knows. Out of Texas. No one knows. <laughs> What's the name of your clothing line? We don't know. We don't know. Um, uh, but yeah, okay, so 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 would you have adopted if you were a rich white man living on Park Avenue? Wasn't it Park Avenue where they lived? I would have helped. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be an ass, but I'm just thinking realistically. Like, yeah, I ain't finna come live here. I mean, that would have been a ch- not like, with my white daughter and her I, chastity, and because because they so you taking it a because, whole other because, place because 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 uh, uh, Kimberly place. and Willis was around the same age. Yeah, they were. That's out of a cheap porn movie. Is there an expensive porn movie? Cheap porn movie. I don't, I don't think no porn movie is cheap. By the way, I respect what they do. I think they should be classified as essential workers. But the point is, <laughs> is that. Would okay. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd do that. To be honest with you, I'm like they too close in age. I it, know wouldn't, it wouldn't really have to do with that. It'd his little like, Lawrence get on fire. He ain't gonna be tiptoeing around my, you know, my precious. I white think you daughter. can handle that. I think I think that's easy to handle. I think for me, it's just more of like a, like I would have probably done like set up a trust fund and done, some, you know, make sure they. Had and you know, the, and they had the drink out. Yeah, the drink cart was always out. Yeah. Philip, um, uh, Philip Drummond liked to drink. Yeah, he's, I mean, everybody in the seventies and the eighties, like you used to have a little drink out, a little drink out, a little sip on. So something. the drink out around my yeah. teenage daughter and Willis. Yeah, but you 
know, you ask this, you ask your kids to behave accordingly. <laughs> not everybody started drinking when they were thirteen, Rob. Not everybody, but most of us. When when y'all first had y'all first little sip of the naughty water? What? Yeah. yeah. What, how old were you when you first started drinking, Seth? When, when you first had a drink? When I first had a drink, probably like 16. So, okay, so I was a little earlier than you guys. I was 13. You were a child. You were like an infant. Yeah. I, I mean, co- comparatively speaking, but I, hey, but hey, I was young, but I was ready. Yikes. The R. Kelly quote. <laughs> Is that R. Kelly? Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, no, that's Keep Sweat. Keep Sweat. Yeah, yeah Keep yeah. Sweat. Yeah, yeah. It's a right and a wrong. Yeah, wow. Good and a bad. Well, anyway, this is a good place to break. I know we're running long today. So, um, man, thank you guys again for uh, always tuning in. My man Rob and I do. Oh, uh, we do we do everything we can to entertain you guys. And we're just having fun, to be honest with you. We were literally putting the camera on ourselves talking about the same sort of randomness that when we talk on the phone, uh, we'd be going through. And it gets a lot. Tr- this is more structured than what it normally is. Yeah, because like it gets all over. All but, over but the stratosphere. we're trying to be professional, we try to have some sort of And we try to keep the cursing to a minimum because we use a lot more uh, colorful language. Yes, yes. Because I know my mom watches this and uh, I don't want her. She'd be telling, she's like, yeah, I got to stop all that cussing. I was like, I thought I did. I thought I was pulling up. Yeah, shit. My, <laughs> no, and a shout out to my mom who's, uh, you know, it's always nice when your mom is one of your loyal supporters. <laughs> when my mom goes hard. Yeah, shout Rob's out, shout out to, to Tony Clark, my yes. mom. We, hey, we we should have been shouted out our moms. They yeah. look like, they, hey, they look, look and listen they to every episode. First, I think they were our first two subscribers. Everybody with, with Cookie and yeah. everybody that's shout ever supported. Yeah, man, we, we, we love Cookie all y'all. Cleanly. But yes, this is uh, uh if, <laughs> hopefully I don't think this is too wild <laughs> because we, we we this is the toned down version. Oh uh, no! Listen, if it's too wild, then you know just take the ride with us. Like, we should this do, is gonna be fun. We is it? What, what would we do? Uh, a subscription to something where they could just uncut. Yeah, like I don't we know. thought. Hey man, I seen that. Thing. <laughs> I don't even know if I could do that because I still got to go outside yeah. and deal with people. I talk too much shit. <laughs> but anyway, like, thank you guys for uh, for checking in, and uh, we appreciate you guys. And again, uh, uh, like, subscribe, and uh, get the notifications on our YouTube, and go down to, uh, download the audio on uh, Apple Podcast and Spotify and any place that has a podcast. So thank you for checking in. I'm Mark Stewart. This is Rob Hunter Jr. This is Stat Lines Matter. Bad boy. I ain't come for games. Say it to my face. Say it to my. Say it to my face. I ain't come for games. Say it to my face. Say it to my. Say it to my face.